All right, we are recording. Okay, great. Hello, world. We're just going to give it another quick minute. So Next while day. everybody's here, before she gets teaching, um, I'm going to keep everybody on mute and questions will be asked in the chat um, at the bottom of the screen. You, there's a chat button and it pops up to your, the right of your screen. Um, I don't know how it looks on cell phones, but that's how it looks on computers. Um, so ask questions there and I will re relay them to Ilidor who will be up to her elbows in flower so cannot respond or read. That'd be great. So the first thing I just wanted to talk about very quickly. So hi, my name's Mistress Ilidor de Bedegrain. I technically live in Atlantia, but I am an Athamark citizen and I am the Athamark Kingdom Seneschal as well. And you're going to get to listen to me basically blather on about pie. So the first thing to know about me is I have been an SCA cook for 30 years. That's literally the second event I went to and I've never looked back because that's where all the cool kids are, by the way, is in the kitchen. And um, I've been a Laurel for nine years, almost nine years. And I have been internet famous for pie for almost 10. So if you're interested in that story, just Google, but honestly, Monica, or cook source and you will find all about that but it was basically um a uh person um plagiarized my or not plagiarized that's when they still they copyright infringed uh two of my recipes including one that we're, we're doing today and um it was it was something so um but well but that's what, not what this class is about i actually do teach a class on um copyright in the SCA, but that's another day. So um, today what I'm going to do is show you how to make this. I believe you about tell you what I'm going to tell you, tell you, and then tell you what I told you. So what we're going to do today is we're going to, I'm going to show you how to make two freestanding pies. One, um, a nor the, the medieval way, and then there's the cheater way that I'm going to show you. And the cheater way tastes a little better. Um, the second is cooking the medieval way or don't stress about baking and what is pie and then finally a discussion of the history of pie. So um, let's get started and I want to also add that the recipe that I'm going to be using will in fact be available to you. So I have previously posted this recipe on um, my, um, my Laurel's website called goodcookery.com under a tale of two tarts, but I've modified it a little bit since then. So I'm going to send you the newest and updated version. So um, we're going to be cooking out of the um, form of curry, curry on English. It's uh, to make tart of apples and the recipe goes as follows. This is great. Take good apples and good spices and figs and raisins and pears and when they are all well braided with saffron, well to then do, to do that into a coffin and then forth bake it well. That's it. That's the entirety of the recipe. So we're going to have to work on this a little bit. So um, actually, yeah, while we get started with that, I'll start uh, showing you how to do a little bit with the apples and whatnot, and then we're going to discuss um, medieval baking, or what I, in this, with this in this pandemic, I like to say it requires you to make do with what you have, and let's discuss no stress baking. So here we are, we're going to move down a little bit, so then you can see, there we are, what I'm up to. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut up some apples and some pears. So that, because that usually takes the longest. Well, I have this lovely machine right here that does it for me, which is not even remotely period at all whatsoever, but I don't have syrup, so this will do. This thing's great. So you basically just shove it on the apple on here and then just start, uh, sorry, here we are, start rotating this and it literally just cuts it for you. It's amazing. You can get this off of Amazon or some other cooking websites. And then you just pull the core off, hit this and pull it back. Ooh. And hopefully don't cut yourself while you're doing that. That would be bad. Um, Are you okay? I think so. We'll find out here in a minute. If not, I'll just go get a Band-Aid. So uh, I think I just cut a little bit of my skin. <laughs> you know what? 
Talk amongst yourselves for a minute. I do have to go get a Band-Aid. I'll be right back. a and is not for the week of heart. So, yeah. Awkward silence. Awkward silence. I know someone whose uh, SCA name was uh, Lars the Lucky because he almost cut a finger off prep doing feast cook prep. Oh, yeah. Julia Child didn't do this. This was not on Julia Child. That's because no Julia one Child had editors and didn't do live streams. That's also true, right? It's very Dan Aykroyd of you. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, so good. Oh. Actually, in the beginning, Julia Child did do it live stream. Oh, did she? Whatever happened, happened. I just saw a documentary on her on PBS recently. Wasn't she also like willing to have a little drinky drink while things were happening? Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. She always had one bottle of wine for in the food and one glass of wine for the cook. Right. As it should be. Well, it was French cooking, so I had to have wine. Of course. All right. You all right? Yeah, I've just uh, put a little Band-Aid on. We're good. I can't okay. believe I did that. I've done two sets of this t the past week. And this is the first time it decided to bite me, obviously, because I'm nervous. So, uh. <laughs> All right. The other thing I wanted to show you is it can do pears as well. You want to put it on the um, bigger side. You know, that way. And then I'm going to keep my fingers away from the blades. That's probably smarter, right? That was great of me. I can't believe I cut myself in the first two minutes of this talk. That's great. Good job, Illidor. Anyone who knows me is like, yeah, that sounds about right. There we are. And then, lat one, and you know what? I don't think I need that last one. We're good. I'll be done with the machine that bit me already today. There we are. Oh, we're good. So do we have any questions yet other than what the heck is Illidor doing cutting herself? Lucy, I can't hear you. I think you muted. Yep. Just, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm dumb, but I'm okay. All right. So, now that we've got the apples and pears cut, which is really the, which is really the longest part of, um, of what we have to do. That's like the biggest time consuming thing. We're just going to start making some, some of the crusts. So, I like working on a silicone mat. And what we're going to do is make, uh, the first one is going to be the fully freestanding and we're going to do a hot water crust. And that's going to be three cups of flour. Now, usually I like to make it with all purpose flour. I'm sorry, with whole wheat flour, but all I have is all purpose flour because it's a pandemic and this is what we have. And that leads me to the medieval baking part of this. They, one, they had plagues too, okay, and they had to make do with what they had. They didn't have a Kroger's or a Giant Eagle or whatever, Safeways or whatever your local grocery stores were. They didn't really have that. They had to make do with some of the stuff that they had. And so, and, and, and that's what we're doing today with, with, with pie. Pie's very forgiving. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about the different kind of crusts that are available, but the medieval crusts are generally very forgiving. And more importantly, most people just wanna eat the filling as is. So, um, so, that, so what's in season or what you have, make what you have with that. So the um, hot water pastry is actually a very easy one to make. You, all you need is flour and hot water. So I'm going to start the kettle here in a second and we'll get warmed up while I'm making the flour and we should be ready to go. I'll show you here in a minute. Are the hot water crusts more burly than normal crusts? Yes. So I am not, a, I am not a food scientist. So, and I was madly Googling to try and figure out if hot water developed more gluten than cold, than cold water. And I can't actually answer that question, but it is very sturdy. And this is why we're making it and it and because it's not meant to be eaten i'm not putting any salt in it there's no reason to put salt in it other salt is there for primarily for the taste it's not there to 
um, retard yeast development like you would in a uh, in bread. So two cups of flour and then third cup of flour. There we are. And then I've started the kettle. It's getting warm. So, so here we are. This is where we, we're going to be making it. It's going to be awesome. Let's see. Did you boil yet? Get hot? No. All right. So this leads me to um, some more discussions on, um, hold on a second. Let me turn off my, there we are. So people won't be dinging me. There we are. Um, let's talk a little bit more about the no stress part of the baking. So perfection is the enemy of good. There's no Mary Berry here. There's no Paul Hollywood. Um, there, there's no one who's going to say it's such a shame, right? No one's going to care about a soggy bottom. No one. What we're really here is to make food for our families and friends and have a good time doing it. And I also tell you in the SEA, <laughs> when I'm cooking for fighters, they do not care if the if how flaky that crust is they just want to get it in their mouths as quickly as possible um measurements um are generally what a previous cook thought might work so feel free to play around with them you'll see that today because i'm going to be talking to you about measurements and we don't have any in that previous the previous uh, in the 14th century english pie that we have they don't have measurements. They just tell you, get a bunch of apples, pears, raisins, and spices and put them in together. Substitutions are good and often okay. Um, spice, like, if you don't like a spice, don't put it in your pie. Just because I like it doesn't mean you have to like it. I don't like cloves. I also don't like allspice. Like, I have a true and utter hatred of allspice to the point where I won't go to Starbucks um, during uh, pumpkin spice season, because I don't like it that much. And that's not, that's just a personal preference. So don't feel like you are committed to have to follow that recipe if it doesn't, if, it, if you'd rather use a different substitution. Um, the only word of caution I'm going to give you on that is medieval spices. Make sure you know the difference between um, new world and old world spices. On the other hand, by the late 16th century, which is totally in period, they had vanilla, they had chocolate, <laughs> they had a lot of spices that we consider to be new world at that point in time. So do your research on that and see what you like to do. Um, and then life is a, in this recipe or an experiment. If it doesn't work this time, well, there's always tomorrow. All right, any more questions at this point before I start throwing the boiling no, water? I've been in. answering them kind of as they've popped up. So it's like you're reading people's minds. <laughs> it's good. It's still, it's still working. So w do we have any questions? No, no. Nine, I, I see 33 people in that chat. I guess they're just chatting with each other. Well, they, someone asked, did you season the crust? And you no, I do not. answered no okay, just it. after they, they right. asked. So how we, far back can pie crust be documented? That is coming up later in the topic. But basically, I think the late 1200s, early 1300s, but we're going to discuss that. So don't, don't be like Eleanor said so. We have to, that, that's a discussion. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have cheap hot water. So then the next question is, is like, how much hot water do you put in your pot, in your pastry crust? And that's a really good question that I had, wish I had a good answer for you. I'm just going to put in enough. So we're just going to stir it up till it looks like kind of like pie dough. Is the water boiling? Yep. Well, it wasn't quite. It was a little bit under, but it's definitely hot, when, which is why I'm stirring it in first and not using my fingers right away. But I will tell you, it does, in fact, get quite warm when you're working with it. All right. It's still, can you guys see that? Yeah. Still not, I need to put a lot more in. There we is, are. 
Is pie crust a European thing or more global? I have not found any recipes in period from the Arabic side. And I, and, uh, uh, honestly, I've not, and I don't see very much with Japan or China either during our time period. Um, I think that's because the most of the wheat, I don't think they had wheat production as much in Asia. Don't, I mean, don't quote me like they had none. I'm saying it was more, you saw more stuff with rice in there. So you don't see pie crust per se. You also don't see very much bread in Asia either. No, I mean, now you do. Like, oh my goodness, some of the Japanese buns are so amazing. Ugh. All right, this is a lot. It's doing this a lot. All right, let's see. Where are we at this point? Do I want to put my hands in there? The answer is not really, but I think I'm going to have to. Yep, here we are. It's going to be a little warm when you do this. I'm not going to lie. You might want to wear gloves. It's not too bad. It's just like a really warm bath at the moment. Oh, I'll be right back, guys. Oh, dear. Take a pause for me. In two weeks, uh, Elnamir is hosting a class on dumplings from around the world. And if you think of dumplings as being very, very tiny pies, then you might be able to, to stretch that, that bigger dumplings might be made. But that's something to ask uh, Mistress Marina about in two weeks. Is that going to be via Zoom as well? Yes, it will be on Zoom. Next week is Kitchen Gardens. Um, run by Mistress Elise and, and the Honorable Lord Michael, um, which should be interesting because people are, it's just starting to be planting season here in Eldermere. Wonderful. We trying to do an Eldermere Cooks fit, uh, Zoom meeting once a week. That is so cool because we don't have, Atlantia doesn't have an Atlantia Cooks guild that I know of. So I'm enjoying seeing stuff from outside. Really? You should start one. Um, I'm actually a protege and I'm just starting to dip my toes into cooking. So you can do I, it. <laughs> this is like my first foray. This and buying um, a cook, a medieval cookbook that someone suggested. Um, so. Lane Delight? Um, I don't remember what it was. I'd have to look at my Amazon account. Lane Delight is what most people start with. It's a great, great beginner cookbook. Um, oh, oh. Maggie someone. Oh, is Maggie Black, yeah. Maggie oh, Black, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I just saw that um, one of my, uh, band-aids came loose and I was like nope let that's not that's bad so but we are good there's nothing bad in there we should be fine so just double check yeah we look all right all right so we're not gonna eat the crust anyway right that's right no one's eating it <laughs> it might be slightly disturbing to see some red bits in there on the other end be like extra protein it's fine there we are um I'm just getting it all nice and goopy Right? Like you want it to look a little bit like bread dough. Now, here's the fun part about this. This thing, uh, you can't really screw it up because if you have too much water, just add more flour. So, and then at this point, I'm just going to um, knead it kind of like I would. I think it might need a little bit more water. Let's try kneading it a little bit and see if it starts to become more like, oh, uh, there we are. Is it a soft dough or a firm dough? It's soft right now. It's pretty soft. But I assure you, it's, it's and you know what? It's like Play-Doh is really what it's like. It's very sticky. But it does hold its shape. Like, it's not going anywhere. So that part's really good. Yeah, this is starting to feel good. This is starting to feel very much like what I want it to. In fact, it might be a tiny bit too sticky, so I'm gonna put a little bit of flour down on my soap pat. Here we are. All right. Ta-da, that's better. 
Ah. Do you have a cookbook you recommend, Elidor? For a beginner? Yep. Let me think. I do like Plain Delight, and I actually have it on my shelf, just not within grabbing distance. It's on the other shelf, not the artfully placed shelf that I have right there with all the other ones we're going to be talking about. Um, so, but Plain Delight is a pretty good one. Actually, the Medieval Kitchen is pretty good, too. So, oh, yeah. It's I a like that one a good bit. Also, I'm going to be um, terrible, and I'm going to hawk my own website, which is goodcookery.com. Technically, it is mine only in name. Master Hewan Dainbridge is the one who wrote, I would say, 95% of the recipes on there, and he started the website. But I now run it basically as a manager, as the, um, as the, new, as the new owner. And that's G-O-D-E cookery, right? Yes, correct. All right, that's looking pretty good. That looks like dough. Now, usually you don't work a dough this much. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about like the type of crust, but a modern Martha Stewart crust would not be th this worked usually. I very much did work that like it was, um, uh, like it was dough. I did want to form up some of the gluten in it because gluten will help keep it together. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is I'm going to roll this out and I want it to be pretty thick. So you'll notice I have like little bumpers on my, uh, my rolling pin and that's to keep it from me to flattening it too much. So I'm just gonna kind of roll it out and make the base. This is what we're doing right now is we're just making the base. And I want to make it in as much of a circle as I can but this dough is really forgiving. I can just like take part of it off and stick it back on like I'm gonna do right here and it'll come out or just pretty good. Let me do a little more. There we are. That's looking round-ish, fairly round. Let's see, the, I might wanna make it a little there we are. So you're not looking for like a 12 inch pie? No, this one's a fairly small one. You might be able to make it up bigger than that, but I, you might need a little bit more dough. But I like a thick dough. See how thick that is, that's pretty thick. This is because this is what it's cooking in. There's not gonna be anything else. So you need it to have pretty thick so that it won't like start spilling through. So I'm gonna put this on um, parchment paper and we'll get back to it here in a minute. So, from there, I take the rest of the dough and I'm going to try, I'm going to leave a little bit, a little less for the top because the top's not a part of the structure. It's really just there to be, you know, pretty and decorative. So I'm going to, with this, try and um, make it. So there's two ways to do it. There's the more of the pinch pot method where you would just put it down and then just pinch it up like you would with pottery. And the other way to do it, I've also heard, but I've not done it, is when you will, um, you can make little tiny like, like with spaghetti, right? Like you would make something like this, but just really, really long and then roll it around like a spiral on the top. That's another way to do it. Yeah. This way I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make like the walls and smoosh the walls into the bottom and then add the top. So let's try, let's get these walls going. There we are. Do, do, do. Now those walls are too high in my opinion, but that's okay, we've got knives. Oh, there we are. That was good. Thankfully this thing's forgiving. I should just leave some of that right there. Just now, yeah, I think so. All right, Where'd my, there's my knife. I don't know if I should be allowed near sharp objects. We'll cut that bit off. I think that's about enough right there. That looks good. And I will add, I'm gonna put this off to the side for a second. And then I'm gonna do the, the other side. Hopefully people are entertained by this. 
they're probably entertained about how many times I've cut myself at this point and had to go get band-aids. There's knives involved. We're all enthralled. In, in yeah. <laughs> all right. So again, this dough is not meant to be really eaten. So I do not care how tough it is. I do not care how nice it, well, I want it to look a little nice, right? But um, I'm not really worried about how tough it gets either. So here we are, looks about right. Is the dough edible though still? Yeah, it's it is totally it. edible and funny story. So how I started making pies and became a pie person was I um, did a, uh, the ice dragon, um, ice dragon uh, uh, pentathlon, actually, I, I just was, there was an ANS competition called Ice Dragon, and I think you guys in Eldermere know about it as well. I'm seeing some nods, yes. So what happened was I went up and did a comparative 14th century English apple pie versus a 16th century English apple pie, and then when there was a 14th century apple pie, and I laid it all out, and I was like, don't eat this one, this crust not meant to eat, and the 16th century pie, apple pie crust meant to be eaten. And one of my judges came over there, and he's just gnawing on, the, on it. I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, I like it. I'm like, okay, <laughs> fine. It's, but it's really not meant to be eaten. There's nothing in there. I mean, it's just flour and water. So if you like flour and water, <laughs> if you're one of those people that like to eat raw pasta, then this might be for you. So, but here we are. All right, so let's see where we are at this point. So, okay. So we have our nice base. And then we have our, um, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of push it up a little bit and put these around on the sides like so, like this. And it should, hopefully, it might stand up. There we are. And then it's helpful to have both things going at the same time. Ah, now you're like, this is not going to work. It might not. We'll see what happens. There we are, that's looking a little better. Like, how is that looking better? That looks like a disaster. And I'm like, it does at this exact moment. It might perk up. There's a filling question. Uh, is it too soon to ask? No, go ahead. Um, you mentioned figs in the filling. Do you prefer fresh or dried for the pie? I prefer what I can get. And today I got, um, I got dried figs, because that's what we had. So you notice I'm like pinching this a little bit and I'm also a little bit short. Let's see if I can build a little bit of a side here. Yep, here we are. There we go. I'm just pinching it like I would a pinch pot for um, with pottery. You're literally just making a place for the filling to go. I'm gonna add Do you a add water bit. between the layers or no. water help hold the dough? No, um, what do you mean? Um, sometimes when pottery, you put a slurry between. Oh yeah, I don't. Uh, I have not tried that method. This is the method that I got to work. I was just basically treating it much more like play-doh, and there we are. And look, it's mostly a pie. <laughs> the fun part is is that it will once you get a filling in there. It definitely, and then put a lid on, it becomes a bit more uh, salt, it becomes more solid. Mm -hmm. like, there we are. All right. So that's one method. And then I'm going to roll out the top and put it in later, but I'm going to show you the other method now, too. So yeah. this is the cheater method. And this is when you want to eat some of the crust. And you need two things. You need a springform pan and butter and some, uh, this butter is already salted. So, um, which is not my preferred, but it's a pandemic. So you gotta do what you gotta do. So again, what we're gonna do, and I'm just gonna use the same, cause it's had the same ingredients in there. I am just going to use three cups of flour and I'm a cup of butter and then enough water to make it work. This is much more like a traditional crust. So 
Um, let's talk a little bit more about the traditional crust. So one of the things, so if I'm gonna go and make a pie for Thanksgiving for my family, I will straight up go to Martha Stewart and Google pie crust and find whatever she's doing. She's pretty good at it. There's one, what they're trying to do that they use, and, and they didn't, so one of the things the modern, modern people do, I'm a modern person, one of the things that people that are not making medieval pies do are they um, use, they use both temperature and they use non, they use liquids that aren't water to help decrease gluten formation. So um, they use the, so one of the things you do with with uh, butter is when you want really cold butter, and then they'll do and they will rest their their dough is because that way they can get folds in it to make it flaky. And if it's a really cold butter, um, when it goes into the oven, it will create steam, which will give that beautiful lift and that beautiful flakiness that they have. They also use occasionally, Martha uses on occasion, vodka rather than water, as some of the water in the, in the pie dough, because that gives you a liquid, so it helps you mold the um, pie crust, but it doesn't help with the gluten formation. All right, so now I've got three cups of... Um, what about oops. adding eggs to it? Is eggs so, you, so in a modern crust, you can, in fact, eggs to it, too. That adds a protein to it. Um, and they, the medieval folks did do eggs sometimes. Sometimes they used almond milk. And I have a whole thing of things to discuss while we were doing, which I haven't really been doing. I've been doing more of like what I'm actually doing my hands-on stuff. But um, all of that does, in fact... Um, uh, where is it going? Yeah, it adds protein, makes it a little bit more malleable, and also makes it taste better. So um, it's, but it also does not make it the same sort of structure that the um, hot water and flour do. Hot water and flour is basically, so um, flour and water, particularly when the water goes away from the flour, right, when you heat it up or it dries out, basically becomes practically glue, right? Dry, you know, it's almost like you could use it to, for, for, and I know this from a personal experience because I was just doing a ton of sourdough break baking, and whenever I left pieces of the sourdough starter somewhere, which is just yeast, water, and flour, it would be like, I'd have to get a chisel to get that thing from, to keep it working. <laughs> to get a chisel to get it up is what I mean off of my off of my counters so it's really and when you get gluten formation like that it really does help with the structure so but we're using some butter as your fat and it does have some protein in it but we're as your fat and it's going to help make the um, dough very much more malleable without as much water and it's also tastier, which is why we're making this one as well, so that we can have a little taste. So I like to, um, uh, I had this butter out for about an hour, and that helps with uh, 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 put, putting it into the dough, and it makes it easier to work. So um, a lot of people have, I used to have, but I don't know where it is anymore, my grandmother's like pie, um, wire thing that you used to use to, to put the dough together and the butter together, but I don't know where it went. So we're just gonna use a fork and then I'm gonna use my hands. So it's basically just squishing that butter in. I might just go straight to my hands, it's a little hard. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. You just squeeze it and move it together until it becomes the equivalent of a graham cracker crust if you can. And this takes a little bit of a while. So let's move on, since I have to do this for a bit, let's move on to uh, here we are, that one's gone. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what is pie. So I'm gonna, then I wanna add that this is my opinion and it's exactly worth as much as you paid for it. So I'm gonna tell you that pie is not pizza, it is not a pepperoni roll, and it is not baklava. And I'm gonna explain later in the talk of why I'm telling you all of this stuff. So I feel like pie, is a baked or fried dish with a filling and encased in a lawn leavened dough. And, and that's my story and I'm sticking to it. 
Um, and so let's talk about the three categories of pie. So, or things that like to, to make it a different type. So the first one I'm gonna say is the crust. You have um, crust, medieval crust is generally flour and sometimes which is a wheat or sometimes rye. I've not found any recipes yet that have almond flour for gluten-free crust in the medieval world as of yet, but that may change. I keep looking. Um, there's a hot water pastry crust, which we're making, crust made with fat, which we're making here as well. And then we already talked about the Martha Stewart crust. And then there's um, the gluten-free crusts, which I have not had too much um, uh, goodness with, except for the almond crust. And I like to do um, almond flour with sugar and butter, and then just do it as a press in. That works really well for the folks that are gluten-free. It's a very tasty, tastes kind of like crack. It's delicious. So then there's the shape. Shape I have is uncovered, covered, freestanding, and then handheld pies. And then finally for filling, I have, um, we have the savory, which is like, that could be meat or vegetable. Sweet is a fruit usually. Then there's custards, which could be both savory and sweet. You need eggs um, to bind the milk or cream or, or, or both. Non-period vegan uh, custard pies um, can use cornstarch and plant milks, but they did not have um, cornstarch in period. So if you want to do a vegan um, custard pie for uh, an event, that's going to be tough. You're going to have to use modern, modern stuff. There's also marzipan and frangipan tarts too, which is an almond um, flour and almond flour cream, more or less. All right, we have gotten it to at this point looking kind of like graham cracker crust. So now I'm going to pour in some water, and I'm not as much water as I had to with the other one to make it malleable. Is this is cold or warm water. Cold water. I think you could probably do it with a hot water, but I've never done it with hot water. I've only done it with cold. So this is pretty much exactly how Martha makes, I mean, a normal crust that is not like, I'm going to make this super flaky. Um, actually, this is exactly how you, you do that, minus the vodka part. If I'm a, uh, but then what they usually do, a modern cook, will then put it in the refrigerator or sometimes the freezer. And that will help um, make it flakier when it goes in the oven. So. This is about where when I'm getting the consistency I'm getting. I don't know if I could, eh, let's give it a try. Yeah, I used way less water because it's already got some moisture from the butter in it. I don't know how well this is go, gonna go. I'm gonna add a little bit more because I'm a nervous Nelly. Does humidity affect baking? Yes, 100%. However, it's not that humid here right now. It was a little cold today, so the only, the only thing is I'm just eyeballing it. A better cook would tell you exactly how much and what the exact, like some uh, cook scientist should be able to tell you exactly the moisture it needs to be to get it to the, I'm not that person. Uh, I'm just someone who makes a lot of pie. Which is weird because this was not how my, my expected way I was going to go. All right, I'll move this over here. Get it out of the way. This was not my expectation for when I became a Laurel. I did not think it was going to be on pie. But pies were mentioned <laughs> during my ceremony. So girls got to do what girls got to do. All right. So... Here's our cheater. This is great. First, this is your base. And we find out that our base is um, eight and a half. So we're, we just need to basically get it to be about, uh, yeah, about eight all the way around. Because I have it on my lovely slip hat, how big this is. We're just going to make it this big. So that's all I have to do. And so I think I might have a little bit too much there. I'll find out. I, yep, here we are. I'm going to roll it out. Let's see. Or you can see now. There we go. 
So if you have a slip mat like I do, you can see this is how big you need it to get. So I want to try and get it to nine all the way around. And I might make this one thinner. I don't actually have to make it, um, and I'm going to do that. There we are. Yep, there we are. So much easier. And this dough is a lot easier to work. And I had to use way less water. So this is a soft dough? This is a softer dough, yes. Yep. There we are. I should have put this around it first. Let's see if this works. Come on, baby. Ah, oh, you were good to me today. I will tell you, my I often break my pie, pie dough. Like, there's tears. What does breaking pie dough mean? Well, what I mean to me that is when I pick it up to put it on into the um, into the pan, and this I tend to um, it tends to break on me. Like when I'm lifting it up, like part of it will tear. Thank you for asking. You're making this so much easier. Oh, good. Right. So now what I've done is, as you can see, I have got it in there. It did not break. It did not tear. And now I'm just squishing it to the sides a little bit. So that way it'll be easier. There we are. Again, playing with it like Play-Doh. This one's really malleable. There we are. So now I've got it all the way around. So the next thing I'm going to do, and you'll notice that one is bigger too than the other one, because I had, I have, um, since I have a stabilizer, since it's I got a stabilizer, I don't have to worry so much about it um, um, uh, being so thick. Ooh, come on. Oh, we're going to see how this works. There we go. So this moves on to my next, there we are, part of my talk that I have my notes for, which is an abbreviated history of Pi. And um, where Pi was first created is debatable. So um, here we are. That looks pretty good. Some have suggested wrapping meat in a dough a la pepperoni roll um, or beef wellington um, may be a, um, oh, that's pretty big. Oop, I didn't need to make it that. There we are. That's fine. There we go. I'm using, as you can see, I'm putting it around it and then molding it to the um, center. So that way all of it's all covered. So there's nothing's going to leak out. And being that rough with the crust won't hurt it? Eh. Eh. Okay. I mean, <laughs> if you wanted a Martha Stewart pie, you should have gotten a Martha Stewart recipe. <laughs> Illawar's words of wisdom today. Here we are. Yeah, we're, again, we're not stressing about how tasty it's going to be. It's really there for the filling. But if people want to eat this one, that one would not be a bad idea. Because I will tell you, fat is tasty. Um, okay, so then um, the other reason why I talked about, like, what is not a pie is, is that there is um, Ibn Sayyar al Al Rock's 10th Century Baghdadi Cookbook has a crumble pie recipe, but that seems much more like a baklava than it does an actual pie. So I don't like, I didn't think that one, I was like, when I saw pie in 10th Century Baghdad, I was like, yes. And then I read it and I was like, sad. This was a very sad day when I read that. Because I was really hoping to have a 10th Century pie that I could serve people at Gulf Wars. That was not to be. All right, there we are. We're once again putting it up against the edge and just pressing it in. Okay, I need to take this part off and then re-roll that. Oh, I pray that I have enough. I do, I have more than enough, we're good. Yeah, we should be fine. Roll that out. Um, let's see, that page is done. And right. So I wanted to talk very quickly about the history 
of um, what's that? Eh, going away. Um, the history of like basically cookbooks. So, and this this is why it's somewhat like we don't really know when pie came about because what we have the very first cookbook that we have any kind of information about is a Greek cookbook that we don't actually have. We know it exists and there's like a fragment in it, um, but we don't have a fragment of a recipe, but we don't have it. The, one, the first recipe book that we have, unless someone else has more information than I do, some, so unless some magic has happened in the past 24 hours, the first cookbook that we have is Apicus, which is from the Roman time period. And then we have pretty much a whole lot of nothing until the 10th century Arabic cookbook. And then there's more nothing for a few more centuries. And then we have the anonymous Andalusian cookbook from the 13th century and no pie in that one either. So um, let me be clear though, my medieval French, Latin, and German are non-existent, so they may exist somewhere and we just have not yet seen them. All right. Hey, what do we know? Huh, there we are, cheater pie. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is take a quick break from rolling dough out and we're gonna work on the ingredients. The ingredients are super simple. Like we showed earlier where I cut myself, you need apples and you need some pears. I'm gonna go drain these and then I'm gonna add the rest of the ingredients. Have you ever used quinces as an addition to your pies? Yes, and they're delicious. Yes. Mm. So, Mm -hmm. I'm adding. I have a question. Sure. Um, there were Victorian hot pie crust frames, hot water pie crust frames. Do you think there were ones for medieval period, like your springform can? So I, we, I've seen pie dishes, but springform is this particular kind of steel. That well, I don't no, think I'm just. Uh, you're using it as a frame tonight. Um, right. Yeah, I'm like trying to think of like, what did they have? I haven't seen one. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just means I haven't seen one. So, but if you find one, please tell me. So what we're going to do for the, um, oh my goodness, there's 42 people on. How did that happen? <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to take the apples and pears. And I'm going to tell you, I got about eight apples and about four pears in here. And I think, we should be good. I just eyeballed how much I had for the pie. Now this is probably two pies worth of, hopefully it's two pies worth, two pies worth of apples and pears. And I'll be honest with you, I think I need to divide it in half because I have way too many apples and pears for one bowl. So that would be probably 10 apples peeled and two pears or eight? Um, it kind of depends on the size okay. and um, it also kind of depends on, uh, also, yeah. So you wanna, you wanna kind of like eyeball it when you're looked at the store or collecting apples from your heirloom apple tree to go, this is how many, how many I want in my pie. And it's not an overflowing pie like it is in like a Martha Stewart pie because you've got to put the top on it and it needs to be a little bit flat. So there we are. So I've got about two, that's about right. So this much, oops, let's do this. This much is about how much I have. I would say probably between four and six apples and, and two pears is probably what we're looking for. So from there, I like to add um, uh, figs. I had a cup of figs in my... Question. Yes. Do you want it to be like mounded up high so that as the fruit cooks and reduces, it shrinks down to level or like level no because it should be it it it's it'll it'll stay it'll stay so yeah hopefully it'll stay it stayed last night we'll do the magic of television i will show you here shortly so i'm gonna put half of the figs about half a cup in each so about half a cup of figs again you guys will get this recipe is there then, a type of apple or a pear you prefer 
So I went and did research on a number of uh, pairs, like the pairs that were close to what you could get in the store that were period. Yep. And Bartlett pairs looked pretty good. And then we also saw, um, and I had some Golden Delicious. They also seemed to, from my previous research, which was now 15 years ago, talked about how they could, you know, go. They, their, their line went back a, a while. Now there's some heirloom, um, apples and pears that you can get that I uh, don't have access to. And again, that goes back to our no stress baking. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, there are some really tart apples out there, but if you like a really tart apple pie, go ahead and use them. If you like a really sweet apple and go ahead and use them. If you only have one kind of apple and you want to make it, then maybe red delicious. Red delicious, no good. No. <laughs> but other than that, any other apple except for red delicious, which has been way too, you know, overused and overbred over the years, pretty much makes a, a an apple pie. If you like the apple, you it's probably it. going to be pretty good. That goes to one of my tips later, which is that um, uh, if it tastes good before it goes in the crust, it's probably going to taste good after it goes in the crust. The only caveat I have to that is um, if you are using cornstarch as a thickener, and sometimes I do because I have gluten-free people I cook for. If you're using uh, cornstarch, it does not taste good. It does not. But it tastes fine after it's cooked. It's weird. All right, so I have currants because that's what I had. I did not have raisins, but they're still pretty good. So we're going to put about, I don't know. Whoops, let's bump it up. Let's put some more in there. There we are. It's good. And we're going to put some more in this one too. Now we're going to come to the best part, spices. So what makes this one really special, in my opinion, is the saffron. Saffron in the pie really makes it pop. And so I'm going to take, because saffron's expensive, I'm only going to take a pinch and I'm going to grind it between my fingers and put it in the pie. And you will see my fingers are already a little bit yellow. It'll be a little bit more yellow here in a minute. Took a pinch. This is probably now a very expensive pie in the middle. It is a very expensive pie in the Middle Ages. There. It's not so cheap now. No, no, it was not. <laughs> also, I was paying COVID prices. So, um, so... There's two kinds of period cinnamon, but I only have the one I can get at Whole Foods. So we're using that. And you're gonna ask me how much you're gonna do. I'm gonna be, and my answer to that is enough. So I'm just gonna put, I would say probably, people like cinnamon a lot. So you could probably bump it up to like almost a tablespoon if you want, but really what you wanna do is color it well, just like it says in the, in the recipe. So, and I'll tell you, it comes out quick, so. But you really can't, I mean, you can screw up. The, the cinnamon challenge shows you that you can, in fact, have too much cinnamon. Don't do that, by the way. Don't do the cinnamon challenge. It's bad for you. It's bad for your airways. All right. Next, we're going to do is some nutmeg. I'm probably going to put in less nutmeg than I did uh, cinnamon. There we are. Enough is my theory. And I also like a little bit of ginger. So really... You can put whatever spices you like in here. Some people put cloves. There's, um, uh, that's really it. Like any, or you could just go and get like, I like allspice and I'm gonna use the um, apple spice um, or pumpkin spice mix. Go right ahead. Whatever you wanna do is fine. Um, it's medieval to use the spices that you have on hand and not run out to the store because they didn't have stores. Someone recommended Cubis? Um, that's a bit sharper, but yes, that would be lovely. If that's a, if that's a flavor you like, then absolutely stick it in there. All right. So now we're just going to mix it up and I want to look to see if it's well colored. Just mixing it up. Do, do, do. I don't think it looks pretty well colored. And most importantly, I'm going to do a very important taste test. Mm. Tastes like pie. All right. Mm. Actually, I'm going to turn the oven on. All right. Again, this one also well braided. All right. So let's go to the non cheater one first. 
and then you just stick it in there. Oops. So I'm gonna be honest with you. Previously, when I did this on Tuesday, um, I did not put parchment paper down, and it was just fine. I did squirt it a little bit with Pam, but it all worked out in the end. It came right off, as you'll see here due to the magic of television shortly. You wanna make sure that you get all of the, um, the, uh, the good bits, the currants and figs in there, in part because figs have a lot of sugar in them, and that's what helps make this pie sweet. So you don't add sugar to this, right? No, no sugar at all. Nope, none. You can, the farm of curry does talk about sugar. Sugar is something that they did have in the 14th century. They don't have it, they don't have as much as they did in the 16th century. So, um, so um, but they don't mention it. And I've never put sugar in it before. This is in part because pears and figs have high amounts of sh naturally sh natural sugar in them. So I've never felt the need to add more sugar. Uh, I get a lot of like, this is a really great pie. What did you put in it? And like, what do you mean there's no sugar in it? Um, a fourth of a cup of figs has 19 grams of sugar in it. So I'm, I'm okay with um, not adding more. So when you get to the Elizabethan era though, because of the slave trade, because of what was going on in uh, the Caribbean, you absolutely see way more sugar in Elizabethan recipes. Like there's off the hook, the amount of sugar you see in it. Uh, I think the recipe that I had also had sugar in the dough. Uh, and that's a real fun fact. So the dough in the 16th century, a recipe that I compared this one to, absolutely was meant to be eaten because they put the saffron in the crust. And if you're just making a crust yellow, you can use an egg for that. Oh, I forgot the egg. We'll get there in a minute. Oh, all right, they were adding a little bit more. Da, 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 da. As you can see, looks fine. All right. Ooh. Now this is where we hope that I measured well enough that we can put um, lids on these things. So, First thing I'm gonna do is just take the dough from the, um, from the cheater one and try and see if I have enough of that left to put out a crust. I do because I'm gonna make it thin. All right, all I need to do is to get to about nine inches. You probably see it's a little. And if not, I'll just pinch it a little bit. We'll figure it out. Oh, I'm almost getting there. So you don't care how thick this is? No, because this is just like the container to hold it on top. Here we are. Oh, it worked. Yay. It mostly worked. I'm just going to fold in the sides a little bit. Try and make it look a little bit desirable to eat. I'll be honest, this is one of my failures as a cook, is I generally do not care, even though I know that the first time you eat is with your eyes. Oh, excuse me. And so it's important that you want your food to look good. There we are, that's not looking too bad. There we are. And then you absolutely wanna make sure that you have a hole on top for the steam to come out. That's too big, this one will work. There we are. I like cheating and using a little thing for it, popping it right off. There we are. And ta-da, pie. That's one. And then here's the cheater one. Let's, I mean, the real one. Let's see if I can get this to work. All right, this dough's been sitting here for a while. It's pretty pliable, should be all right. I'm also going to roll this one out a little thinner, mostly because I just don't have enough dough. I wish it was a little thicker. But 
No stress baking, right? Oh, there Wait. we are. Ah, it worked. And now I'm just going to pull it, push this up a little bit. It stayed together when you did that. I'm just, I held my breath. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Very exciting. All right. And again, it needs a little bit of, but well, we're just going to make a bigger hole. There we are. Ta-da. And if you want, you can use whatever extra dough you have to make a little bit of something to make it look pretty. And I'm gonna make this look like a leaf, mostly because I made the other one look like a leaf. There we are. And we're gonna put it on there. There we are, and into the oven it goes. And <laughs> to the magic of television, Ta-da! Yay! So actually, we'll get the cheater one out first. I mean, the real one out first. There we are. I'm gonna, probably going to open this one. There we are. So I'm just going to open it up for you. So I, the other thing I didn't show you there is I put an egg wash on this one, which is why it makes it a little bit browner. And you can see I put a little bit of leaves on there. This thing is sturdy. Look at this. It will hold up for a while. It's got um, apples in there. It's been there for a couple of days and it's still fine. Okay, so how hot is your oven and how long were the pies in it? Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, um, where did I put it? Oh, here we are. Super important non-period gadget. Instant read thermometer. Cannot recommend this enough. So I put it in for at 350 for about an hour, hoping that it would get to like 195. It got to 210. So we'll see what happens. I'll be honest, I'm pretty sure it's just fine. Oh, there we are, cutting into it. Oh, big reveal. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Ta da! There we are, apple pie. I'm not eating it because it's two days old, but it looks good and it looks well cooked, as you can probably see. I think you can see there we are. So is it better fresh then? Yes. <laughs> I'm a big believer in that. So I'm gonna do let me I did not get to let's see, what are we? Oh, we're only at an hour. That's good. Um, that's what I, I thought it would take me to do is about an hour. With it, I think it would have been less time if I hadn't cut myself. I think it would have gone better. Absolutely. Uh -huh. So let me finish a little bit about the history of pie and then let's open it up for more questions. So um, where are we at? Um, we have the anonymous Andalusian cookbook from the 13th century, but no pie recipe that I could find. So at this time, I think the first real pie, pie recipes that we have are from the 13th, possibly 14th in the um, Libra, the art Coquina, which is mine, is in the uh, Hyatt translation from the earthen, earthen, early Northern cookery books as a possible 13th century Danish manuscript. It might even be earlier. There's a chicken pie recipe in there, and it looked pretty good actually. It was chicken, bacon, peas, cumin, and egg, egg yolk, and then cover it up like you would normal pie. I was like, that's how I, I'd eat that. And then after that, we have, if that's not if that's not good enough for you, because it looks like that one um, might be 13th century, but they rewrote it in the 14th century. There's a 1350 version of the uh, Beyond Air Taliant that has, um, because, and that one has 12 different printings. So it's hard to sometimes tell which one you're talking about. But the 1351 has tarts or pies mentioned a couple dozen times and has recipes of pork, mutton, um, fish, eel pies, mmm, and egg and herb, herb tarts. The first English one is from the Anglo-Norman British Library manuscripts from possibly the late 1300s. And my favorite recipe from that one is tarpaulin. And that one is, actually, let's do this. It'll be a little easier at this point. There we go. Um, my favorite one on that is tarpaulin, which is a fruit tart, but it is made with flour and almond crust. If you're going to make that recipe, use your own almond crust. Don't make 
don't, I'm not almond crust, almond milk. Don't buy um, modern almond milk, make your own. It's probably a little bit more expensive, but it's just so much tastier. Um, the first Italian version of, I think, is from um, a 1400 cookbook called Libro de Coquina, but I'm not 100% sure on that because it's an Italian Latin cookbook and then I found it on uh, uh, the historical Italian cooking webpage. And um, I like this one because the title was Apple Pie for Peasants. And I was like, that was nice. <laughs> um, after the 1400s, when we get to the more, more, more 1400s and definitely the 1500s for sure, you get so many more recipes. Um, we have um, so, so many more. Uh, we had uh, Constant Hyatt did a major favor for us and she looked at 39 English manuscripts and found 59 different um, medieval English pie recipes distinct like so sometimes the manuscripts will copy each other and she found 59 different ones and um and that's but she only goes up to like 1500 with that uh then we also let's see oh and then i want to just talk about some of my favorites so there is from a southern german 15th century cookbook um a tart of cherries um, I like the 15th century berry tart one a good bit. And then there's a 16th century quince um, tart um, written for a Portuguese princess um, who moved to Italy. And then Max Rumpolt's apple pie, which I made during a tornado. That's also my favorite. <laughs> but last but not least, the king of medieval pies, all kings, like hands down, what, what, actually he's really the Pope of, of pie is Bartolomeo Scappi. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna hawk this book here for a minute. I love this book so much. Oh, it, it would be, if I could have a boyfriend that is a book, it would be this one. Um, he has 800 pages of recipes and some of the, and, and it had 121 pie recipes in that book, but let me, but let me be clear, that's probably more like three or 400 recipes because what he'll do is he'll say like, make a strawberry pie like this, but you could do it for pears or you could do it for berries or you could do it for this or you could do it for that. So like really, it's like he's got an er recipe, right? And then the different ways that you can go and make it. So that is ultimately my hands down favorite cookbook that we have in period. It's very late, it's very Italian. My second favorite recipe out of out of that book other than the pies are, um, he takes broccoli, which I didn't know was period, but apparently it is broccoli. You take broccoli and you boil it, just parboil it, fry it up in a little bit of olive oil right after that and throw orange juice on it. And I was like, that sounds weird. And then I did it. And it was one of the most delicious things I've ever tasted in my life, which we should all know after watching salt fat, acid, heat, right? Acid makes things taste great. Orange juice is full of acid. The medievals knew just like we did what tastes good. And, um, and Scappy is just an absolute master of that. He's just got so much in there. Um, I wanna give some last minute tips on some pie and then let's open up for discussion. Um, I already talked about my favorite thing in the world, the instant read thermometer. The pie, apple pies should be about 195. Um, meat pies. So don't use ground beef. Make, get regular beef and cut it up into chunks, parboil it and mash it up and then stick it in that pie. You want, to, it, you want it to be a little bit damp too, so when, you, when you put it in. So either with broth or maybe a little bit of wine. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, so when it comes to crust, they, you can use just about any kind of fat that you want in a pie that is not a hot water crust. Um, you can probably do it in a hot water crust too, but makes it very malleable. But um, the reason we talk about this is that I wanted to mention it was I ha I've been at Gulf Wars and I've run out of butter. And then I was like, well, what am I gonna do? And olive oil worked great. So for that was, um, it was a lovely, um, felt very like I was my Italian grandmother again. So lard also works butter, margarine for some people work too. Um, it's just up to you of what fat you want to use and they did too. 
Um, do not try to roll out almond pie dough. Oh, I can put the pies in. Um, do not try and roll out uh, almond flour pie dough. It just does not work. Just press that in with a fork. I like to just make it with butter, sugar, and almond flour, and then just press it in like I would like a graham cracker crust. Um, don't stress. It's just pie. Um, clean as you go. I did not do that today, so <laughs> that, will be, that was a fail. And um, always vent a double crust. All right, that's it for tips of cooking with Illidor, including uh, food in the show. You definitely got a show today, that's for sure. Thanks for listening, guys. Let's open it up. All right, if people want to ask questions directly, um, that's fine now. Um, you have to unmute yourself, though. How are we able to get the handout for today? I will be, once I finalize it, I will be posting it to Google Docs and then I will be giving it to wherever you guys want me to post it. Okay, so should we friend you on Facebook and then? No, I'll, I'll, I will pass, I'll post it up on the SE virtual page and I will Got make it. sure that it gets added to the, um, I'll give it to Eldermere in some fashion. Awesome. Okay, thank right. you. Okay, I'm in. I'm in uh, mid realm. Can it go yes, there as well? Get it to the so the SE virtual classroom page. I will post it there. Trust me. I'm, I am a whiz when it comes to the Googles, so I will make sure everyone gets it. Who wants a copy can have one. Thank you. No problem. Um, what's your favorite pie? What's your favorite pie? Is it apple? No, it's no. cake. <laughs> <laughs> I love the white torta with a little bit of ginger and a lot of sugar and a lot of ricotta cheese and white egg whites and just mix it all together and then you pop it in, put it in a crust, pop, put it in a good fatty extra buttery crust and then pop that sucker into uh, the oven for about an hour it comes out and it's got this kind of like puffy golden top and then when you take it out it'll like sink back in. It is fat and sugar and a little bit of ginger spice. It's um, it's so good. It's my favorite. I have a question. This is uh, Lucy from out in Ontario. Um, I have a question about hand pies. And if you've read anything about how far back hand pies go, are they period at all? Yes, they are. Rizoles are a hand pie and they're all the way back to France. I think they're in the 1350 um, translation of, um, let's see, which one was that? Was that, Mon yeah, I think, what is it? They're in uh, a thousand eggs or more? Beyond, sure. it beyond ear. It's in and, beyond ear. I mean, it might be in Fate de, de Cuisine too, which stole, which Beyond Ear stole from, but I didn't, I, I'm not 100% sure. I don't have it in front of me, but yeah, at least 1350 with results. And they were just basically a little hand pie and then they fried them up. With uh, like a hot water crust or or the fatty crust, the, sh the short, <sighs> short crust? That, so I don't have crust recipes from back then. So this would be an experiment okay. that I highly recommend you try. Because what else <laughs> are you going to do? We're stuck <laughs> in the pandemic. Might as well figure out what kind of the best way to make pie is. Okay. Results are often cheated by using wonton wrappers. Yes. Yeah. It's a cheat. But when you're cooking for 200, who wants to make results? No. No. I don't have serfs. I have volunteers that I do not want to burn out. It sounds like a delicious cheat from Hawk. That's lovely. Have you experimented with pre-baking a coffin or reusing a coffin? Oh, no. Oh, now I want to. I think reusing a coffin, like I don't, so there is, there is but one law in cooking and that is food safety. So um, that is my one and only law in, in, in for cooking. Um, it, and I'm unsure about how safe reusing, I mean, it might be, it might be fine. They might've done it in period. I have not, I have not done that yet, but I might, we'll see what happens. Okay.
Were there any burning questions? Did I have any like, she's wrong on this part? Or was, were there any controversies that I missed other than Monica, please quit cutting yourself? You said you normally prefer a whole wheat flour, but you use the, the all purpose. Yes. Is there a difference in the measurement for those? Did you notice how much I measured? Yeah, I know. <laughs> you are my grandmother. Right? Well, that's how I got taught. That's how I got taught in the FCA, and um, that's how the period recipes are. It's only to only really, really it's, it's late feel. that you start getting measurements, okay. and I don't trust them. <laughs> so um, what I do is... For, particularly for SCA cooking. So it's, where the majority of my creativity when it comes to the SCA is, is cooking. And if I'm cooking for an event or a feast or something, I'm always experimenting ahead of time. So I'll make the pie a couple different ways, see which tastes better to me. And frankly, I don't care if people don't like it because I like it, so it's good for me. But I think I have a good, I think I have a good palate. So. <laughs> Why I don't ever serve fish. I love fish, but I'm deathly afraid of serving it to other people. So again, it's up to you what you guys want to do. So it's really more about the feel of the crust. Yeah, it really okay. is. Also, I can't tell you like the humidity might be different and mm -hmm. what is the protein level of the flour. And so um, I will and say that there's more gluten in the new in whole in the all-purpose flour than like you know the gluten formation happens more in the all-purpose flour than the whole wheat. But the whole wheat just kind of takes it looks more looks more peasanty, right? More medieval-y. So I kind of like that. This one, I mean, using like well-refined weevil-free white flour for, for food for a peasant, come on. Um, I have a quick question. This is Lucy again on um, scaling up for feast pies. Do you keep them all still in the eight inch, seven inch range. Yes. And make a lot of them. So I will, I will be straight up honest with you for, I do, I do not, I will not do this. This is too labor intensive for a, for a feast of, um, I, yeah, I usually cook for eight. Like I think of it as eight. So if I'm cooking for 40 people, that's eight pies. Okay. So, um, that would be if let's say I'm cooking for 80 people, we're now talking 10 pies and then more than that, even more. And then you saw how much labor it took to make two pies. So usually what I end up doing if I'm cooking pie for, um, for a feast is I'm using, um, uh, an eight inch pie tin, and I will sometimes cheat and get the aluminum. I don't really expect them to come back to me. So um, even though I have a lovely collection of pie tins, if I'm cooking for a big feast, I worry about how much of the plateware is going to come back. So I will cook for, I will cook, often I will do a more open face pie, right? So like the tart for Ember Day or a blueberry, I'm not, a berry pie. Um, or a, or a custard. Custard's a good one. Custard's a great one for a feast because you can go out with one one um, bottom crust, and then it is super easy to get a bunch of eggs and cream or milk together, warm that up enough, put whatever else custard stuff you want in there, and then just pour them into each pie and then cook them. I also blind, blind bake for custards too, so because it's so liquidy that you mm. want it to be, um, you want it to be baked already, so it, it won't absorb as much water. So it won't, won't have a soggy bottom like pop. Okay, like thank you. Have you ever um, prepped and frozen pies and then served them, cooked them for a feast? I can hear someone, but I can't. Have you ever cooked? prepped and then frozen the pies and then cooked oh, them right for the feast. Yes, or I have. Them. That's great. That's eat. That's super. So tart for Ember Day, I've done that for. Um, when I went up, when I had to make pie for someone's vigil for Pendic, I did that. I made it at my parents' house. My parents live an hour away from Pendic. It's the worst. It's awful. 
Um, so I made pie at their house and then froze it. And then like the day, the day of mom took it out, defrosted it and then baked it and then brought it up for me because she loves me. So. My mom's also a skating now. So it's kind of cool too. I got, I infected her basically. Um, anything else? I think you've really been very thorough. <laughs> I, this, this, was, this was a fairly, I mean, I can't tell you how many rabbit holes I went down to find when did the first pie happen, because I was like, I'm finding it. I don't care. I'm, it's going to happen somehow. I just started look. It was, then I was like, okay, this is it. And then I was like, no, this one is the one before. So um, I knew it wasn't Apricus. <laughs> so. Someone is asking something for a friend else in the chat. Can someone see what the chat yep, was? That was me. Okay, Else, what was your question? Where are you cooking next? <laughs> so it is my real hope that I get to cook at Gulf Wars. We'll see what happens. Not this Gulf Wars? This Gulf Wars was canceled. Right. Next Gulf Wars in 2021. Okay. My hope is when we get, I get to cook again. Cool. So, on the other hand, else, the, I'm pretty sure whatever, the first time we get to have a big Alpha Mark event, I'll just bring pie. It'll just happen. And you can have some. Yay. I miss you guys so much. We miss you too. <laughs> and, and your pies. Yeah, yeah. Um, is there anyone wanted to talk? So I think we, did anyone want to open it up for discussion or anything else? Oh, if you're cooking for gluten-free and non-gluten and gluten people at the same time. Yes. You have to like either do the gluten first and hide it or do it 24 hours after doing the gluten because the flour, um, gets in the air. So... At Gulf Wars, I have a large open kitchen. And by large open kitchen, I mean no. I have cables out in the middle of the woods. Yeah. And so what I usually do is I make the gluten um, first. I mean, not gluten. I make the uh, almond flour first. And I'll press that in, put the stuff in, and then I'll bake it. Um, and then after that, I will make the, the regular, um, I'll make the regular pies from that. And, and we do things like, the open-faced ones are, or if it's in this container, it is um, the gluten-free pie, and the rest are over in, uh, like in, in the regular pie tins or pie plates. So I'm a huge proponent of food safety. Everyone, in my opinion, who cooks in the SCA should take an online food safety class. You should understand the temperatures that your food should be at. You should understand cross-contamination. This is a very important topic that like, I, I, don't, I don't like making people sick. That makes me very unhappy. So everyone should pay attention to, go, there's a bunch of online classes that you can- oh, yeah. Penn State is doing a free one right now. Yes. I highly recommend that. If you are gonna be a cook, or more than just chopping up some stuff and chatting with the cooks, which is how I started. Um, I highly recommend taking a food safety course. I worked in a school cafeteria for uh, several years and it was invaluable. Uh, the, all the food safety uh, precautions you have to take. But um, It's really important. One of the things I do at Gulf Wars when I cook for people is I leave them like of space and say, what are your food issues? And then I say something nice as well as like, your food issues do not scare me. All right, I'll be honest. There's one food issue that I will tell you that it does scare me. And that is if you are a vegan, gluten-free, nut allergy person, I am in trouble. I'm in a lot of trouble. Gluten-free, vegan, and nut allergy means you're having chickpeas and you're liking it and that's it. Yeah, and all the vegetables I have as well. Yeah, that's one. Rice, a lot of rice. Yes, that is actually, so one year, um, the first year I was at Gulf Wars, no one ate rice. 
And I was like, whatever, all right. And so then the next year, everyone and their brother ate rice. I can't explain it. It was just sort of like, so now rice is like a major part of the menu. And when I go to Gulf Wars and I cook. So I, when I cook at Gulf Wars, I, um, I, they get five things. It's, and they don't get that it's the same five things, but it is, it's the same five things. They get a meat, they get a legume, they get a vegetable, they get a starch, and they get a dessert. And um, somehow that thrills them all. But it's literally, that's how I keep the menu straight in my head, is I just pick five, they get five dishes every night. Sometimes they get a bonus, it depends if I found something on sale. But it, there's all, and everything is gluten-free except for the things that are obviously gluten in it. So if it's a pie, it's obviously, or bread, then it's um, gluten -free. And everything's vegetarian except for the stuff that is obviously meat, has meat in it. And if you, if you, once you make that a very smart distinction of like no meat in non-meat things, then um, most of your vegetarian problems go away. And if you're like no gluten and non-gluten things, then most of your gluten issues go away. Um, the, the one, the other big one that I do is all of my thickeners for sauces. I, I just use cornstarch, which is not period at all, not even tiny little bit, but it is gluten-free and it makes sure that everyone can eat it. Is this how I have planned feast? Yes. Are there any more questions? Anything else you want me to go over? Did anyone have any commentary? Did I suck terribly? No, oh, you were fantastic. I think I was good, except for cutting my finger. That was a major <laughs> bad decision on my part. That wasn't so bad. That it, um, it was fine. It would be nice to have better camera angles on a couple of things. But other than that, it was great. If, if I had something other than my laptop to do this on, you betcha. We would have been. I really want to get like those tasty, you know, things where like they've got it above and you can see them while they're making it. No, I want one of those, but I do not have that set up and I doubt I will have it anytime soon. So mm -hmm. since I'm in, I'm in a fairly uh, pandemic area. Okay. Thank you very much. This has been a lot of fun tonight. Oh, good. I'm so glad. I'm so glad cooking with Illinois was at least entertaining. And I'm glad you didn't end up in the emergency room. Me too. <laughs> that was really <laughs> so bad. It wasn't, it, it wasn't that, it wasn't very deep. It was just long. I just have, a, I, got, yeah. I got two of them. I have two long cuts, which Ooh. are annoying. So, but there weren't, it was just like the top layer of skin is what it got. And it just decided it wanted to believe, maybe top two layers of skin. And they were long and thin. So they weren't bad at all. I mean, even, I could have taken some duct tape to it and it would have been fine. <laughs> no, no duct tape. No duct tape. How about painter's tape? Can I use painter's tape? That's closer. Better, yeah. I, I'm allergic to the adhesives. So the oh, I hear of, you. And I've, I've seen too many of the fighters, you know, peel that off and my skin goes, ah. <laughs> Thanks again. I'm going to have to go. All right. I think this might be a good time for us to cut, say goodbye at this point then. Thanks. Don't hurt. Thank you. I'll send you the link when this um, Zoom has to compile it. Um, and that takes so tomorrow. I'll send you the link to the save video. All right. All right. Thank, thank, thank you all so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. This was a lot of fun. Thanks, guys. Bye.